Hey everyone, today I want to tell you about my recent visit to ASML, a large tech company in the southern part of the Netherlands. They've been in the news quite a lot lately, mostly because of the export restrictions that the US has imposed on them, and this is basically to prevent export of their machines to China. Now the reason for the restrictions is that ASML produces so-called wafer scanners, which are machines that are used in the manufacture of microchips. Now in this video I'm not going to discuss politics or chip manufacture in general, I just want to take a deep dive into the imaging that is at the basis of photolithography. I guess you're all familiar with the constant race to shrink the size of electronic components such as the transistors on microchips, and compared to 50 years ago, the current transistors are now a thousand times smaller. The manufacture of a full chip is a very complex operation involving many steps such as the deposition of layers, etching, baking, implanting ions, but there is one step in the manufacturing process that drives the miniaturization and that is the one done by the machines that ASML produces. The task that these machines perform looks deceivingly simple when you look at the principle, and in a way it's quite similar to the process behind analog photography. So in order to create a pattern on a microchip, you use a light source, a mask containing the pattern, and a lens system that projects the image onto a light sensitive film, which is called a photoresist. And basically, this is the only task that the wafer scanner performs, doing exposures with light. Everything else in the process of making an integrated circuit is done somewhere else in the chip factory. Now even though the principle of operation is very simple, the price tag of these machines indicates something else. The latest generation of ASML's machine have a purchase price of around 170 million euros apiece. To put that into perspective, the money for just one machine could also buy you a complete residential area with 400 family houses on it here in the Netherlands. And in addition to the purchase price, they cost several millions per year to operate. But the flip side of course is also that they're extremely valuable to the companies that manufacture chips. Somehow all that money can be earned back with the one process step that they perform. Now this is only possible if the machines have a high throughput and the task that they perform has very high added value, because that's the only way that you can justify such huge investments. The technology has now reached a point that the smallest features produced on a chip can be as small as about 12 to 15 nanometers wide, and I know that the so-called technology nodes name numbers of 5 or even 3 nanometers, but those numbers aren't actually about physical feature size, they're more about, let's say, the general process accuracy. Even so, it's quite hard to appreciate how small 12 nanometers really is, but let's give it a try. Here is the processor of my first real PC. It's an Intel 486, which was manufactured in 1992, so it's more than 30 years old. With the naked eye you can see distinct areas like the cache memory and some colors of light being diffracted, but that's about it. It's only under a microscope that you can get an idea of the amazing complexity that this chip contains. So here's the chip at the lowest magnification and it's still difficult to see individual components, but when you increase the magnification a bit further then more details come into view. By the way, what always amazes me is the combination of the high resolution and the area over which it is achieved. So to make this chip work correctly, the placement of every single feature over the full area of the chip should basically be perfect. And it's not difficult to imagine that in order to make this chip, you need a very high accuracy for positioning the different layers, and also a pretty special lens with a high resolution and field uniformity. Now let's get back to the 12 nanometers. To see the smallest features on this chip, you actually have to go to quite high optical magnifications, and that is because the smallest features are around 1 micron. For example, these little circles, which I think are vias that connect the different conductive layers, are about 1 micron in diameter. But 1 micron means 1000 nanometers. And if I now draw 12 nanometer features to the scale of just a single via, this is how they would compare. I personally find this completely mind-boggling, and I hope that this comparison gave you at least some frame of reference of how small the patterns are that can currently be made with state-of-the-art photolithography.